in the heart of the Netherlands, amidst the lush meadows and blooming landscapes, a hidden gem of nature's brilliance can be found, the common blue butterfly, one of the smallest species to grace these lands. Its wings shimmer with a vivid blue that captivates all who lay eyes upon it. But there is more to this tiny wonder than meets the eye. Welcome to the wondrous world of the Dutch countryside, a realm where human ingenuity and nature's beauty intertwine. This is a place of waterworks, dikes and meadows, a landscape that defines the very essence of the Netherlands. One third of the Netherlands is under sea level and an extensive network of dams, sluices, canals, bridges and mills prevent the country from flooding. This is a typical Dutch dike in the Netherlands. A dike is a long wall or embankment built to prevent flooding from the sea. Although these constructions are hardly good news for biodiversity, there are a few species that can benefit from them. One such species is the common blue butterfly, also known as the Icarus blue, or Poliomatus icarus. You see, on the side of these dikes, there can be an abundance of wild flowers and herbs. The presence of flowers itself is incredibly important for insects. For many insects, nectar from these flowers is their main source of sustenance. These tiny, bright blue butterflies are often found in grasslands, arid hillsides, meadows, heathland, roadsides and verges. It prefers warm, sunny and open spaces for flying around. And it appears that the sunny, flowery slopes of the dikes in the Netherlands are a decent place to reproduce if you are a common blue butterfly. In weak sunlight conditions, Males often bask low on herbage with their wings held half open. The males only have two things on their mind. The first is nectar, essential sustenance, and they spend a significant amount of time visiting flowers. The second thing that males are looking for, however, is much more elusive, a female. It may surprise one to learn that the female of the common blue butterfly is in fact not blue. Well, that's a lie. This is also a female. And some of the females do in fact have a little bit of blue on their wings. It seems to vary per individual female. The majority of them, however, tend to be more plain brown with variable traces of blue. And these females are rather elusive and shy creatures. They only take short, regular and explorative flights. While the males tend to be more stationary and defend their territories, females just wander in short bus bursts across the landscape. Once the males encounter a female, a fight can break out. Only the strongest males will get to mate as the territorial male insects try to scare each other away from the female. Once they have decided that they like each other, the male and female will settle down and start mating. D 
during this process, they are extremely vulnerable. The male transfers a spermatophore to the female. Not only does this contain the male's sperm, it also includes vital minerals and nutrients that will support the longevity of the female. Typically, mating lasts for a short time because it makes them so vulnerable. They have to do it as quickly as possible. Our story is soon about to begin, but not before we consider a special type of plant. This is bird's foot trefoil, a dainty yellow flowered plant that dots the meadows like stars in the night sky. Lotus corniculatus, or bird's foot trefoil, is a member of the pea and clover family, and it emerges from the verdant meadows, and its slender stems stretch towards the sun, crowned with clusters of petite, bright yellow flowers that beam like rays of sunlight. It is the plant's distinctive leaves that grant it its intriguing name, resembling tiny birds' feet. These compound leaves comprise five leaflets. But more importantly, it is the favorite host plant of the common blue butterfly in the Netherlands. Meanwhile, when the female has finished mating, she separates herself from the male and quickly moves on. Her next goal is to locate the golden flowers of the bird's foot trefoil. It's the favorite plant for her offspring. This female is laying eggs. She pushes down her abdomen and uses a sticky substance to glue small individual eggs to the leaves of the plant. The common blue butterfly's journey now begins as a humble egg carefully laid upon a single leaf of the elusive bird's foot trefoil. It will take several days before the first signs of life become visible. At first, small holes become visible in the leaves of the trefoil, the first signs of life. The caterpillars of the common blue have a peculiar way of eating. Instead of taking bites from the leaves, they appear to keep the leaves intact, creating what we could only describe as small windows. They don't chew through the leaf membrane, they only eat the nutritious parts on the surface. The newborn caterpillars are small, but soon, over the span of about one and a half months, they will become bigger.
Several weeks later, once they've become bigger, the caterpillars look like what can only be described as a bean. They don't have the typical shape that people imagine caterpillars to have. Instead, they are rather oval and flat. In a peculiar alliance, these young caterpillars form a unique relationship with ants. They secrete a sweet substance that becomes a delicacy to these tiny caretakers, who in turn fiercely protect the larvae from any lurking danger. A partnership that exemplifies the intricate and harmonious balance of nature. The caterpillars, with their voracious appetites, provide sweet sugary secretions highly sought after by the ants. Neither the caterpillars nor the ants need each other to survive. But their alliance does make life more comfortable for both of them. Instead of seeing the caterpillars as a potential threat or a meal, the ants embrace their role as protectors. They lavish care upon the caterpillars, shielding them from harm predators, and maybe even the harsh elements. This behavior is an extraordinary demonstration of mutualism in nature. The ants become devoted caretakers, surrounding and nurturing the young caterpillars with tenderness and unwavering commitment. As time passes, the caterpillars devour the nourishing leaves of its host plant. In Northern Europe, most caterpillars exclusively feed themselves with a diet of bird's food trefoil. Although in other parts of the world, they can prefer to use different local plants. But in rare cases, they also move on to other random plants. Their sweet tooth, for example, cannot resist the nutritious flowers of blooming clover. It's no surprise considering flowers contain a lot of nutrients and sweet nectar. As the caterpillar reaches the pinnacle of its existence, it needs to find the perfect spot to undergo its stunning transition. A dangerous journey begins. Sometimes the caterpillars are carried by the ants, where they pupate within the ant nest, but in a lot of cases, the caterpillars will also pupate themselves, safely buried under rocks, in soil, plant roots or crevices. In the leaf litter, at the base of the plants, the caterpillars have now formed tiny pupa. And inside this unassuming pod, the caterpillar's body dissolves into a nutrient-rich soup breaking down its cellular structure. In this awe-inspiring act of biological alchemy, imaginal cells, holding the blueprint for its transformation, begin to awaken. New tissues, organs, and the wings of the butterfly form. It is a symphony of rebirth orchestrated by nature. And then, with a gentle struggle, the chrysalis splits open. A wondrous creature, adorned with wings of vibrant hues, emerges into the world. Its first task is to climb up, in order to find the highest point possible. Because in order to unfold its wings, it needs the assistance of gravity by hanging upside down. And then the butterfly exerts pressure, which makes its own body fluid, which in butterflies is not referred to as blood, but rather as hemolymph, pump through the wing veins. 
giving them their shape. In a way, you could say that they are inflatable. For really large butterflies or moths, this process can typically take up to half an hour. But for this small butterfly, it's done within literal minutes, despite its struggles against the wind. Once the butterfly is done, it is not ready to fly. While the wings have the right shape, they still need to dry out and harden. So for now, all it can do is wait. Once again. At this moment, the butterfly is very vulnerable. But with the assistance of the sun, the butterfly is on its way. And a new generation of butterflies is created. Unfortunately, not all the newly born butterflies will make it. Ironically, they have to be mindful of patrolling ants. The same ants that nurtured them during their childhood. What was once their greatest ally has now become their enemy. And sometimes things can go wrong during development. Not each butterfly is the same. Can you notice anything different about this individual? This is a gynandromorph butterfly. This butterfly is half female and half male. And is the result of a mutation during the first cell division. Such butterflies are incredibly rare. And even the most fervent butterfly photographers and collectors can spend entire lifetimes without encountering one. The fact that I was able to film such a butterfly for this documentary is nothing but an extremely rare coincidence. In most cases such individuals are sterile. It is half male and half female, right down to the middle. And it does show that how it comes to nature and the variety of all its forms that we pretend to know, we can always expect the unexpected. In grassy meadows and open spaces, the density of these common blue butterflies can be quite high in some years. And by all means, it is a common species in most of Europe. Their name, Common Blue, is thankfully still accurate. Of course, this does not imply the butterfly is free of threats. Habitat destruction, in particular because of human development, is a major issue for butterflies worldwide. And because of this many species, not just in the Netherlands, but globally, are declining. Some species have disappeared from the Netherlands, such as this spotted fritillary. Thankfully it's still common in different parts of Europe, but in the Netherlands the last breeding populations seem to have been extinguished in 1977. Another tragic story is the wall brown butterfly. Since 1992 this species has declined in the Netherlands by 98%. A rather remarkable and stunning figure, if you imagine that out of every 100 butterflies decades ago, only two butterflies remain today. This is due to a combination of climate change, eutrophication, human development and grassland mismanagement and more complicated factors. The common blue butterfly 
is however a thankful exception to this depressing trend. The common blue butterfly is still not extensively threatened and in fact it is by far the most common blue in Central Europe and Northern Europe. Another name for the common blue is the Icarus blue. And no butterfly, even the most common species today, is invulnerable. So let's hope that even this little Icarus will not fly too close to the sun. Hey, my name is Bart Coppens and I made this documentary myself. If you're wondering how long it took me to produce it, I have been filming these butterflies outdoor with my camera for five years. I was checking the timestamps of some of the files while I was filming this documentary and the earliest shots date back to 2019. Yeah, to put it into context, that's before the COVID pandemic happened. That's how long I have been filming these butterflies in the wild obsessively every summer for years to collect all the footage to make the perfect nature documentary about this awesome species of butterfly that I love. It was really, really hard work, but super rewarding. I remember the moment I was able to make a close-up of the gynandromorphic butterfly. And during that time, I could almost cry. It was the cherry on top. Unfortunately, instead of supporting me, YouTube has made my life even more difficult because several years ago, they permanently demonetized my channel. YouTube tried to kill the beast, but they only made it stronger because it turns out I have very supportive and generous fans. And while it sucks to have to ask this to people at the end of a video, if you like my show and if you appreciate what I do, consider tipping or donating or becoming a member of my Patreon. There are several ways you can help that are available in the links in the description or sometimes in the pinned comment under this video. Of course, this message is only for those who are willing and able to. I don't expect anyone to donate. In fact, it, I love it if people watch my videos for free. For me, it's very important and it feels embarrassing to ask, but it's the only way I can continue to make such extensive videos like this one that take me over five years to produce. Acting as a single camera crew, going outdoors every day to film the same species of butterfly up to insanity until I have two hard drives full of footage of these insects. And then finally having enough footage to edit a full-fledged documentary. It's difficult. And around the world there are many amazing and incredible species of insects. And I am fully capable of filming their life cycles and making documentaries of them, even if it takes me years. And maybe in the future I will be back with more. It's gonna take me several years to film. See you in the next one.